Hey guys, Doc. Uh, I really don't know how to put this video together because it's like three days worth of video of us cutting grass, getting the house ready to put on the market. The main point I want to make on this video though is if everyone's going to have a push zone, and that's what I talk about a lot. In the lawn guides, get the lawn guides, we talk about that push zone. And for warm season grasses, that's when you start to sweat. When you hit the 80s, for zoysia, bermuda, centipede, whatever it is, that's your push zone. That's the time to come out and put out. What we're doing is PGF complete, PGF complete, every two weeks just about. Water, 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 push your grass, get it to thicken up, get it dark, get it green, and then you can chill out. We're doing this, and even cool season guys, you too, with a cool season grass, you're gonna wanna do that before stress conditions move in. So this is the time when you push that lawn, you push it hard, <laughs> I'm telling you. You don't have to worry about it turning 100 degrees. The only thing you have to worry about is if you don't have irrigation and you're gonna run into a drought condition. But if you have irrigation, man, push that lawn right now, push it hard. Our Bermuda lawn over at the other house, which we're getting ready to sell, well actually we're selling, was set back almost a month because of the freeze. And I really was trying to time the cell to the point where the lawn really looked just, just right. Well, guess what? We had some warmer temperatures move in. Um, we had 80s and 80s. The lawn started to thicken up, get really nice and green. So we moved the house sale up almost a week and a half. So today was actually the open house and it was mobbed. <laughs> it was absolutely mobbed. Um, our, you know, we've put so much time and effort into this backyard to make it a paradise. People are walking the back and they're just blown away by it. So what I'm going to do today is um, I'm just going to put, put together, it's going to be kind of jumpy, some video from the other day of us cutting the Bermuda grass, talking about what we're doing. I'll show you us get running over the house, getting ready for the open house and our realtor. Um, I'll even come back here to the farm property and I'll show you the orchard that we put in. I'm getting ready to do a video on that, so I'll get fully explained. Uh, a little watering system I have that I made up for my UTV. I got a bunch of videos stacked up, so hit subscribe, and uh, hopefully I'll start pumping them out now that I, I can take a breather, because I know this house is gonna sell, because we're gonna have multiple offers on it. And uh, hell, I'll even do a how to sell your house video. I'll, maybe I'll interview my realtor, who's fantastic, and tell you what we did to make this place just absolutely mobbed with people. Here we go. Okay, Doc, so what's the secret magic pill? <laughs> How do you get your lawn? Why is your lawn so thick and green and everyone else in the neighborhood is, is still nasty? 80 degrees, pull up your 10-day forecast, and when you see 80s and above all the way through that 10-day forecast, like I am seeing right now, that's the magic pill. That's the push time. That's the push time for your warm season lawns. Bermuda, zoysia, centipede, anything like that, that's the push time. Even you cool season guys, same thing for you, but of course you're like 70s is what you're looking at. This is the push time, we're gonna push it, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hey guys, so a lot of you guys know we're putting this house on the market, it's actually gonna hit the market in a few days. And I've been pushing the living hell out of this lawn, and I have a short term mentality here. What does that mean? That means I'm not putting stuff like Humichar and Dirt Booster, I'm not worried about my soil, we've done that for years. All I'm doing is I'm putting down PGF complete, PGF complete. Three times on the back, four times on the front in the past five weeks. Spoon feeding and spoon feeding because I know that warmer temperature is coming. And finally, pull up to 10 day and I have all 80s coming up. This is the push zone. The push zone for warm season lawns is when you're consistently in the 80s to 90s. When you have that, push it and push it hard. Um, get that lawn to thicken up. You'll choke out any weeds and then you can sort of tone back. After that point, what you can do then, once you've got your lawn nice and thick and green, then you can switch over to stuff like Humichar and Dirt Booster. Um, Dirt Booster, if you've seen my past videos, I just did a bullshit video talking about manures. You gotta watch that video. If you have a garden or flowers, you gotta go back, go to my channel and watch that video that says uh, bullshit on the thumbnail on it. But we talk about using composted manure in your gardens and what an amazing thing is, is when you have that compost come alive. Go watch that video, it's really cool. Um, I got a lot of videos coming out. I got a post hole digger video coming out. We got garden videos. I got seeding videos. And in a couple weeks, I'm going to take you down to the zoysia lawn down at the beach house, which is looking really crappy right now, to be honest. 
Um, it's way behind and it's looking crappy and it needs a doctor. So I'm going to go down there and start to take care of that. So it'd be pretty cool to watch that, watch me take care of that and bring that back to health. But everything's looking good. The green's looking good. We power wash the pool. We power wash the driveways. We're just about ready for that sign to go in the front yard. the lawn is nice and thick we switched over to the McLean's I linked to the McLean reel mowers down below um, they're a much lighter unit than the big true cut that we have the big true cut if I bring it out right now is gonna leave wheel impressions on the lawn so we're back to the McLean I changed my mind on the back. I decided to use the big true cut out here because that's kind of what we've been using on it. And I want to show you something. When your lawn start, if you cut your lawn really short, half inch or three quarter of an inch, and you've got a hill, I'm going to show you something real quick. I don't care what real mower you use. If you cut uphill versus downhill, real mowers cut differently. I guess it's kind of the pressure versus non-pressure but you can see see how that stripes a little pale green and that one's a little darker they're actually cut it may only be a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch different but you can visually see it and we've noticed that for years so that's why I had him stop and uh, instead of going downhill back and forth now we're going a long way so let me walk over and I'll show you the putting green I need to get uh, I, I use a little hand spreader and um, green shocker I found a bag of PGF complete and what I'm doing is I'm going around putting it on all the plants and gardens around here because it's a 1648 so it's fine for that so here's the putting green And it's looking really nice so I come out here with my GK series I have it set for the green then I have another real mower that we don't use anymore that's set at half an inch and I come out and I do a fringe cut at about a half an inch and then I also come and do here so it actually gives it a true putting green sort of look we're sort of fading it into the green it kind of looks nice I gotta say, that looks just fantastic. I mean, this has this year has really been a struggle for a lot of Bermuda owners in our area. If you got hit with that late frost, it has been a struggle. But you pull up your 10-day forecast, and what do you see? You see nothing but 80s push zone ding 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 <laughs> that should tell you it's time to push it you can push your lawn put down pgf complete um, a, a bag rate every two or three weeks push it water it push it water it feed it get it to thicken up it'll choke out all those weeds oh man so we're over here busting our butt and why are we busting our butt today is open house day and the lawn finally looks good <laughs> just in time Man, what a slow year for Bermuda. I'll tell you what, what a slow year. Ooh, the sun's not out. It's looking a little bit pale green, but it's actually dark, dark green, believe it or not. The back is looking amazing. I just cut it. Again, how could you ask for more? That is gorgeous. So, Ryan and I have both been out here busting our butt. He's been out here. He pressure washed all the pool, the back patio, the driveway, the sidewalks. We cleaned the house and my phone's blowing up. Hold on. That's my agent. 
look what else we got going on. The flowers just hit perfect. Let me show you around for the open house. <laughs> so this is what I did for the open house. Um, we came out here, we cut the green. I have to keep off the grass line because I just know, you know, some kids are going to come out here with golf clubs and start whacking away down on my green. And then I'm including two of my real mowers with the house. So I'm including a greenskeeper series with the house and a regular GR series with the house. So that's like $5,500 of the real mowers I'm including with the house. Um, on the gardens, two. One of the aspects of marketing, of course, is to and real estate is to you want people to take ownership so if they have a hobby let's say they like gardening you just don't want to have raised flower raised beds so what i did is i ran to lowe's and i picked up some tomato cages and a few tomato plants just to sort of emphasize that all these I mean, that's a thousand dollars worth of raised beds right there if you had to put them in yourself so it's that it's that take ownership understand what's going on so we got the green I mean, it it's, looks like an official, it putts fantastic. The pool, we gotta do one final cleaning on the pool. Everything is clean. We had the house, the entire house. We had the entire house interior painted. Um, and I'm gonna do a video, I'll probably do it with Christy, just to go over the fact of what we did on this house and why it's selling so fast. I mean, the first day we, two offers that we know we have coming in. So we're gonna have multiple offers on the house. And yes, some of it has to do with this paradise, but it also was presented well. We did the right things. We spent a little bit of money. Believe it or not, we actually had the house pre-inspected. Pre-inspected. So the, the inspection that you normally pay for, we actually had done ahead of time. And then I went ahead and fixed all those items and put fix, fix, fix. We had the house appraised. <laughs> So normally someone would say, well, we have to have an appraiser come in. Here's your appraiser. It was done two weeks ago and you're gonna be using the same guy. <laughs> so we removed all those objections. So man, this place is uh, just fantastic. But the yard, I timed it just right. We actually moved it up a week simply because of the, the weather pattern. Believe it or not, I moved the sale up a week because of the weather pattern. I knew the warmer weather was gonna put this, make it look great. Let me finish up here. Hey guys, yeah, I'm back home. Cut all that grass over there, now I'm back home. Y'all doing okay? Y'all doing good today? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go cut some grass now. Oh, you're pretty. Look at, hey Mary, hey Sue, hey Bill, hey Jonathan, hey Rachel, how you doing? Oh my goodness, what a shit show. We got mobbed with, the day before the open house, we almost set a record with 11 showings the very first day. <laughs> then the open house was just absolutely mobbed. There's still people showing up after the time. Plus, then she scheduled another three showings after the open, I mean, it's just crazy. Anyways, we're back here at the farm. I'm actually kind of too tired to cut the grass. I'm going to put it off a day, but I want to take you up and I want to show you the orchard that we put in in an upcoming video. So hold on. So unfortunately we've hit a little bit of a dry spell, which is not good with all the plantings we've got going on. So what I did was I invented my redneck watering system. This is actually a Craftsman tub from Lowe's. I ordered a, um, a high pressure pump, half inch, which is kind of like an RV pump. I got a 50 foot hose. I got a spraying wand and all I have to do is pull up. And this 35 gallon tub, believe it or not, if I go spoon feed each one of these plants in the garden, will water my whole garden. And I fill it up again and then it'll come up and it'll water my orchard. I'll show you here in a second. So I talked about earlier, I talked about that video of the compost that we're making this super compost and just the amazing results we have with Dirt Booster. But isn't that gorgeous? That is just simply gorgeous. Now we're doing strip tilling. If you don't know what strip tilling is, Google it. Learn what strip tilling is. Basically um, you do a till and then you leave green undisturbed in between. We're exaggerating the space in between. This is a living environment in here. And thank goodness, because as dry as it is, if we didn't have that, man, it'd be bad. 
But look at these. I mean, they are just absolutely amazing. I've already got, I think I already got one little tomato growing in here. Pepper plants. Got peppers. But I also have um, zucchini, yellow squash. These zucchinis were that big. I actually bought them live. And this is about three weeks ago. Look at the size of these things. Isn't that crazy? That is absolutely crazy. So on the whole 40 acre property and all of our agriculture, the only fertilizer we're using is on the backyard. PGF complete on the back. Everything else is natural and dirt booster. Dirt booster in the soil, dirt booster in the compost. That's it. That's the only product. Same thing here on the orchard. Now I'm going to do a video on planting trees coming up here because um, we have ordered all kinds of trees and bushes and everything from this one company and had lots of success. And But I'm going to show you a little bit different way to plant them than they recommend. So here is the new orchard. This area was full of those scrap trees over there, those scrub trees. We cut them all down, we bush hogged it, we killed it, and then I came out and planted clover in here and some brassica. This row is peach. This row is pear. This row is peach. Wait a minute. Apple. Sorry. Apple, pear, peach, plum. Now, you're going to ask, Doc, what are all these blue spots? Unfortunately, I had to come up with a killer. And... We had a severe problem with Carolina horse nettle up in that upper field. And every single one of those blue spots is a young horse nettle plant. And that stuff, man, it is the nastiest weed you'll ever, ever deal with. And it can be toxic. I think it's toxic to cattle or something. So, but I just want it gone. Uh, so this is pretty cool. I'll do a full video on this. I'll show you how we're planting them. And especially on the soil, the soil makeup of what we do here, we do a special mixture that really works well. I, I've only lost one tree that I've ever planted. Now, knock on wood, let's hope that these things take because I got so many varieties here, who knows, but so far, so good. So I can come up here and again, I just, I put about a half gallon of water as needed. I come up, I water them, water them, water them make sure that they've got their water with my new little system and it works well. So if you watch my channel, you'll know that this area up here was just sort of a whim. It was just a grassy full of tall clumping fescue, it was nasty. We bush hogged it, we sprayed it, we killed it all off and then we replanted. And now look at what we got. Isn't that great looking? Even as dry, I mean, this soil is, is dry, dry, dry. And look at that, that's just phenomenal. So I've got corn, clover, brassica, um, all growing up in here. It just looks phenomenal. But this is the shocking test results of using dirt booster versus not using dirt booster when you till your soil up. And again, every time I come up here, I'm just fascinated. So, one, two, three, four rows had dirt booster put in while it was being sort of tilled up. We stopped here. Look at the difference. Isn't that crazy? So, <laughs> look at that. Dirt booster in the soil? None. 18, 20 inches tall? 8 inches tall. That's just, that's just insane. I'm kind of worn out and exhausted, guys. This whole week has been an absolute full throttle week for us. Between getting the house ready to sell, all the plantings, the orchard. We've done all this in one week. All this crap. So, we assume we're going to have multiple offers here probably tomorrow. We'll be reviewing some of the offers. And when we pick whichever one we want, what we're going to do is we're going to a few days later, I think we're going to pack up. We're going to go down to the beach house. And then I got to try and fix that lawn down there. Because that lawn, you're going to want to see it. Hit subscribe. You're going to want to see that lawn because it does not look good. Not only did it have that fr late frost come in, but it hasn't had the doctor. 
it hasn't had the doctor to take care of it lately. So, but it needs help. So I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna pound it with the, whatever it needs. I'm gonna really hit it hard with some Dirt Booster and some PGF Complete and really try and push that lawn and uh, get it going. I gotta do some diagnostic work down there. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later. Doc. Thank you.